Okay, so today we're going to talk about um, fluid flow. Okay, last week we talked about statics. It was all to do with um, fluids that are um, uh, stationary. But today we're going to talk about flow. Okay, so we've got flow of a fluid moving through a pipe generally. We'll talk about the volume and mass flow rate. Okay, and they tie up to the continuity equation, which we're going to cover today. Uh, we'll talk about energy in the fluid. Uh, and one particular type of energy is called flow work, which you may not have come across before. And then that will lead on to Bernoulli's equation, which is a fundamental principle of uh, fluid dynamics that you'll need from this point onwards. Okay? Um, all through the next semester, we will be using uh, the basis of uh, Bernoulli's equation. So it's quite useful to remember this. It is given to you in the exam as a for on the formula, but you'll be using it so frequently that I'll be surprised if none of you um, don't remember it. Okay, so first off, we'll start with volumetric flow rate. Now, volumetric flow rate is essentially the volume of flow per second along a pipe. Okay, and so we've got a we've got ourselves a pipe. Okay, and we've got a pipe. It's got a cross-sectional area of A. Okay, and inside this pipe, we've got an element of fluid. Okay, now this element of fluid has a length of L. Okay, and so the volume of the fluid inside that element is obviously going to be A times L. Okay, <coughs> and the velocity of the fluid. Okay, well let's say we've got we've got this sort of boundary or this uh, marker x x. Okay, and the velocity of the fluid we we denote as c. Okay. And if that fluid element moves the distance of L in relation to x, okay, then you've got the velocity is the distance L over the change in time. Okay? Velocity is distance divided by time. Okay, so that gives us C, which is uh, our flow velocity. <coughs> and so the volumetric flow rate is going to be the volume divided by the time. Okay? Now that comes out to be... AL, which is our volume, multiplied by, uh, divided by delta T. And obviously here we've got L divided by delta T. And that happens to equal velocity. So you can say that the volumetric flow rate is A, the area, multiplied by C, which is the flow velocity. Okay? And we denote that by using this symbol V dot. Okay? Some of you may be familiar with the dot notation. Essentially it means it's the first derivative with time. Okay? So if you have X then x dot is velocity. If x is your displacement, x dot is your velocity, and x double dot is your acceleration. So here we're using that notation, v dot equals ac. This is the volumetric flow rate. Okay? And as you, can say, there's a, as you can see, there's an inverse relationship between the area and the velocity. Okay? So when the area goes up, the velocity goes down, and vice versa. Okay? And we'll be covering this in a, in a little bit, in a bit more detail. Okay, well, the next one we're going to look at is mass flow rate. Okay, so this is essentially very similar to volumetric flow rate, except we're dealing with mass as opposed to volume. And so we have the same pipe, okay, cross sectional area A, an element in the pipe with length L. And as before, the volume is A times L. Okay, we, we know that. Now, to get the mass from the volume, you have to multiply the vol volume by the density, yeah? And so we multiply that by density which is our rho symbol, okay? And you'll see that, so mass of fluid is rho times the volume, okay? And that's rho times A times L. Very simple, okay? Now, as before, um, the fluid in the, in, the in, the, in the pipe is going at velocity C, which we know is L divided by delta T, as before. And so this time, when the fluid moves, okay, that volume of fluid has moved past XX, the distance of L, okay? And so we can work out what the mass flow rate is, and that's obviously going to be the mass divided by delta T, which is rho A, L divided by delta T. And again, L divided by delta T we know is C, so you can stick that in this equation, and you end up with the mass flow rate is the density times by A times C. Okay? Now, we know that A times C is the volumetric flow rate, so you could write this as the mass flow rate is the density times the volumetric flow rate. Okay?
Now, generally, when we're talking about um, these equations, we're dealing with what's called the continuity equation. So say we've got a pipe that looks a bit like this, a bit like a funnel. I have a funnel here. Okay. And we've got flow that's entering at, um, at point one. Okay. So there's my element of flow, element of fluid. Okay. And so at, the, at, at point one, we've got the density of entry, okay, which is our row of the density of row one. We've got an area of entry, which is A1, okay, and those are different, okay. And then we've got our velocity of entry, which we've called C1, okay. So there we go, that's the entry. And we know from the, from the mass flow rate that our equation looks like this, M1 equals rho 1, A1, C1, okay. The density multiplied by the area multiplied by the velocity. This gives us our mass flow rate in kilograms per, uh, per second, And we can do the same at point two, which is at the end of the pipe, okay? So here's our point two, fluid leaving the pipe. Here's our element now, okay? And we can do the same thing. Our area, or sorry, density first is going to be uh, rho two. Our area is A2. And then our velocity at entry is going to be C2. And so that results in this equation. The mass flow rate at two is rho two times A2 times C2. Okay. <clears throat> now we know, due to the conservation of the, the law of conservation of mass, we know that the mass flow rate going in is going to be the mass flow rate coming out because obviously there's no other entry into this pipe. Okay, anything that comes in here has to come out. Okay, and the mass flow rate is going to be constant. Um, so if you've got <coughs> one kilogram coming in over one second here, then one second's worth of flow out is going to also be one kilogram because there's no other. Um, Entry of, entry of flow into this pipe, okay? So we, we know that M1 is going to equal M2, okay? And so we can obviously replace M1 and M2 with these equations. Rho AC equals Rho AC, okay? So that's going to be a constant. <laughs> and so, as you can see, um, if, you know, assuming the rho is the same and the area has changed, then the velocity will also change, okay? Because these two things equal each other. Now, that's the particular case. If we're dealing with fluids, okay, and, and we're dealing with liquid forms of fluids, okay, so we're dealing with essentially incompressible <laughs> fluids, you can, um, you can, we know that with incompressible fluids, the density is the same, okay? So we know rho 1 equals rho 2. And so with the, the previous <coughs> equation, you can cancel out the rows, and you end up with AC equals AC. And so as I said, if your area increases, as in this case, the velocity will go down, okay? Because these, these, two these two things have to be the same. So say we're coming, our area is 1, our velocity is 1, where if the area goes down to half, then the velocity has to go up to 2, okay? And so that means that the volumetric flow rates are also the same. Now, this is the case when the density <coughs> remains constant. If the density changes, okay, which will, which will deal with, with compressible flow, so if this is air and fast-moving air, we generally... <coughs> I suppose a, a point to make is that if air is um, moving slowly, you can deal with it as being an incompressible flow. Okay, you can assume that it doesn't compress. But if it's moving fast, say above 50 to 100 meters per second, then um, then you have to deal with compressible flow, and, they, and then this equation doesn't hold. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to look at energy in the fluid. Okay. Now there's, there's essentially four types of energy in a fluid that's flowing, okay. We have kinetic energy, <coughs> which you may recall from physics at school. Kinetic energy is one half mv squared. Does that ring a bell at all for any of you? Well, kinetic energy in a fluid is the same, one half times the mass times the velocity squared, okay, which is the kinetic energy in the fluid. So kinetic energy is due to energy, due to velocity as a whole. And we have potential energy, okay, and some of you may remember MGH is potential energy, again, from school. That should ring a bell. And in a fluid, we call it the same thing, MGZ, <coughs> Z being the height, okay. 
So that's energy due to the height in the fluid. So you have energy. If you have fluid up high and it falls off like a waterfall, then you're converting that potential energy up high into kinetic energy at the bottom. Okay? It's exactly the same with solids that you may have covered at school. Now, the third type of energy is what's called flow work, and we'll cover this in detail in a moment. But flow work is essentially the energy required to displace the fluid. So you have fluid flowing through a pipe, and obviously if there's fluid already in the pipe, then that fluid that's coming in has to displace the, the fluid that's already in the pipe to push it out. Okay? And that requires energy. Um, it requires work. And we call that flow work, and that's denoted by pressure times the volume, but we'll derive that in a second. And the last type of energy is what's known as internal energy, which we denote as U. Okay? And this is the energy that's related to the temperature of the fluid. Okay? Now, I've got a little asterisk here, because we actually are not, we're not going to be using that right now. Okay? And so we normally assume the temperature change to be zero, okay? so that U, or delta U, the change in internal energy, is actually um, generally zero. So we're not going to bother with that. So we strike it out. Okay, so the three types of energy that we're dealing with is kinetic energy, which is a one-half mc squared. Okay, the potential energy, which is mgz. And then the flow work energy, which is pressure times volume. <laughs> well, we've got a pipe, similar to before. Okay, constant cross-sectional area, A, <coughs> and we have a flow, fl element of fluid coming in at velocity C. Now, we can say that the length of that is, uh, is L again, and so we, again, the volume of that is going to be A times L. And this time, we've got a pressure being applied on that end of the element, because essentially, if that element's <coughs> in the pipe and you've got flow, flow coming in, then that element needs to move to allow the flow to come in, Okay. And so there is going to be a pressure being applied on that. If we assume there's a plane at xx, there's a pressure being applied on that plane. Now, we know the area of that plane is A. Okay? And last week, we covered pressure is force divided by area. So you can rearrange that equation to say that pressure times area is going to be the force. Okay? If we've got force divided by area, um, then uh, equals the pressure, then if you multiply both sides by um, area, you end up with the pressure times the area equals the force. Okay, so the force being applied on that plane xx, okay, is going to be the pressure times the area. Now the force is moving, okay, so as this, as this element of fluid moves along the pipe, okay, the force is moving with it, okay, it's continuing to apply that force. And so because it's moving, we know it's doing work, okay. Now, work is defined as force times distance. Okay, you'll cover, if you haven't covered these already in physics, um, they'll be covered again in dynamics next semester. Okay, and so you get pressure times area times the distance that it moves, which we'll assume is distance L. Okay, so we've got a pressure moving from this point here, xx, to this point here, yy, y, okay? And it's being applied over an area, so the force is pressure times area, moves over distance L, okay? And so you end up with the work done, which is force times distance. Now, work done is also a form of energy, okay? Work and energy, are, they have the same units. You can use them interchangeably. And now, as we said, A times L is going to be the volume of that element, yeah? And so we can say, well, the volume of the element, A times L. And so we can replace AL in this equation... In, you know, with V. And so we, co we call this flow work. And that's the pressure times the volume. Okay? So we have the pressure of this fluid being applied, okay? and the volume of this fluid, and we'll get the flow work, which is a form of energy in a f flow. <coughs>